Hi, hello there, welcome to part two of Curler Sketchbook. <laughs> so last time you can catch part one on my YouTube channel. Um, part two, we're just going to go through a few pages and see my techniques and what I've been up to. And I'll discuss with you those techniques and what's going on within those pages a little sneaky look behind <laughs> so where we got to last time a second it's the next page so this is uh again this is a sketchbook that i use for both therapeutic um well, for therapy, art therapy, and it's a collection of myself, of my memories, of things I'm interested in, and things that have happened. Some of them are a little bit uh, abstract. <laughs> As you can see, these are quite abstract. I've got uh, this one in particular on the left. I have a little bit of an obsession with uh, tartan. Yes, not too much, but just a little bit. So this is uh, started with um, lines. So I worked linear with, oh, shaky cam. Sorry about that. So I had a little bit of a thing about tartan. And I thought that the um, primary colours set off by a secondary colour in the corner would really make this stand out as you know with primary colours but uh, especially red and blue it makes your eyes go funny doesn't it <laughs> and here you can see a previous design um that i was working on for my partner and it was just really uh, <laughs> a way of me letting my brain do the work so it's not, it's not overly interesting, this one. So I do apologise at the first one. <laughs> Second one, um, the technique we talked about in part one, where I had either crayons or um, some form of colour. And I would remove a little bit of the paint, the black um, paint on top, to reveal... A picture this time however I decided to do completely the opposite and use the same technique as you can see I used a crayon in the background and then I went over with the black acrylic again but instead I wanted to create a silhouette it took a, a quite a lot of <laughs> a lot of time as you can see to carefully scrape away every little little part. But I found it quite fascinating. And it's created this wonderful texture. Particularly around the uh, butterflies. Um, framing the branches. And the leaves. So if you want to have a go. I've got that. It's a negative. Um to the other one it's uh, like a silhouette and they could be quite interesting to use mm -hmm. right now we're going more cartoony you can say this one's uh <laughs> this this one's inspired by uh warhammer so a little bit of you know warhammer -y kind of influence because i started doing running D, D sessions like dungeons and dragons sessions back then and this was goodness nearly five years ago now and i came up with a particular god type character and he's um as you can see he's a bit of a sun god i haven't quite completed it yet but I'm still going back into the book. Um, nothing's ever complete in my book. Never. 
it'd be complete when I'm not here. <laughs> so I'm moving on to this one. I tried a, another landscape, but try to try not to think about it too much. I find that if I think about a landscape too much, I either won't go through with finishing the piece or almost finishing the piece in this case. Or I completely bog myself down with concerning with angles and perspective, you know, those kind of things that it really stresses me out. So I decided to do a landscape for my, um, just, I imagined a landscape with huge ferns and a moon threatening to hit the earth. I, I was trying to um, get the reflections, but not again, not bogging myself down with what I wanted to see. It's what I wanted, my hands wanted to do, really. You'll hear this quite a lot through the book. And it was um, it's surrounded by autumn and spring leaves. I was trying the. Um, so I use pen in a lot of my work, so I decided to go with white for this, for this particular um, theme. Hello cat. And, and I thought that was quite interesting. So this develops later. As you can see. These are more of the more interesting I find of the um, the previous pages. As with these, I don't know if you, is it yeah it's focusing on it. Sometimes I just sit down and I just draw, and I don't know what I'm drawing until I've finished, or <laughs> until I'm part way. But with these two pages. I found that uh, the acrylic background were was perfect for a, a white chalk, and it br it brings back that white effect. So I started using line work instead, instead of uh, texturizing it. And I thought I found it quite fascinating that the range of colours would change the mood of the actual page. As you can see, it's quite a low mood down here, where you start to lose some of the work. And then when it works, it's working its way up towards the yellow, which could be seen as um, light, like as if a plant leans and works its way up to light. So that's another technique for you to try. It's brilliant. <laughs> this one, come on, you you know you know, you know what this was inspired by. Yes. Um. Let's talk about the background first. Again, I used the same similar technique to this page, but this time I used a dappling and dotting effect, which was actually I I was actually helped by my partner, and he's got a. Yeah, go on. Look how tiny my fingers are. Tiny. <laughs> no. <laughs> and he's got these lovely big hands that make quick work of this effect. And he 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 took to it like a, like a, a duck to water. Let's say let's say that. <laughs> and he create helped me create this fantastic effect. And I am um, afterwards, uh, after it dried, I started drawing the owl, the barn owl, uh, from a particular, uh, not, not a snapshot of that particular film, just inspired by um, just the owl, really. And I, as I worked into it, I could see it on the page. I could see it coming towards me. And I worked with some of the colours you can see here. I used, I went back to the yellow and brought a bit more life to it. So I thought if I just used a little bit of yellow here, and a bit here, and a bit here, it might just make it pop just a little bit more. 
instead of losing the image in the background. I think it, it worked quite well, and as, as you can probably see, look, I made him sign it with me. <laughs> he helped me. So that's another technique you could try. So it's not always just like smush it onto the pages. You can try certain techniques to it. These again, uh, this one in particular, this one's a little abstract. I have got a thing for a thing. I like walls. I like canines, walls, you know, that kind of thing. And I got some new pens. And I decided, I decided to use these pens. You can see that beautiful gold look. Without the pen. Oh, look at that. Really shines. Look at that light. And again, I tried using just a bit of line work and then um, really setting the piece off with a kind of a balance between um, dark, like negative colours and um, a full range of colours really. So in order to bring these this piece out, this wolf type figure out, I decided to work into the background with black, which I find uh, it's, has quite it worked to a certain extent. And then on the opposite scale, I decided to use colour in the top left hand corner with um, various linear work, as you can see. Just random symbols, they just come out of my head anything and you've still got like this um leaf kind of motif kind of uh, design throughout the book as you can see I, I said last time didn't I so that was that was interesting to work with that one too but I couldn't find much of a development other than this the dark working with the opposite ends so I'd use, uh, leave whatever's on this side and then counteract that with a black to really bring the line work out. Mm. And then we have another one. This one was, I was just messing about with this one, I was just playing around. Um, I, I was actually looking at um, a bit of Monet's work. Um, with the gardens um, and that inspired the I started thinking about the garden I'd like to have hence the uh, veneer around it to um, symbolise like a want more than a memory what I aspire to do or to have with me and again, I started using that uh, dark technique. I've got to come up with a name for that technique. It's really interesting. I almost said that. <laughs> and a little bit of doodling with flowers. And there's a little girl sitting here in the grass, which is actually inspired by a photograph that my partner had taken of our daughter. And she was just sitting, it was perfect time, perfect picture. She was sitting there looking out at the lake, surrounded by nature. And that's another, another, um, kind of like, another opposite, as you can say, a need and want to do something. Something that would be um, seen in the future. And now that the, this is actually a memory now from the past. So we're kind of working with both sides of the coin, really. So, should we do another one? And again, as you can see, I used, um, before I go on, a crayon uh, with that. And I think, yeah. And I used um, an acrylic, and the rest of this is just crayon there and white um, pen, well, crayon there. 
and this one is interesting too so i went full blown this time with this and i instead of underlaying it with um crayons and such and going over it with an acrylic and working away i actually started to do board work which is just plain acrylic backgrounds and then upon which that uh, line work that white line work from previous pages would really stand out against this it's kind of like um well the oldies will get me <laughs> drawing on a chalkboard do you remember that and i thought i'd have a go at like uh, a bit of calligraphy a bit of drawing and writing and i'm not sure why but i decided to do a deer and it kind of the whole thing on this page um it started to remind me of uh william morris um if you don't know william morris um i suggest you look to, you look him up uh he used his work with old english roses um he would do tapestries print works and and such he's been quite an inspiration with a lot of my work so he was more he he was against mass production of art pieces and he wanted to produce work that was individual it gave um the work a soul and there's it, there's a lot of history as well behind that and behind him before um you see the drawing or just just before the avant-garde um with factory workers and such anyway enough of art history because you're not here for art history you're here for nosing at my uh techniques which i fully support you in and just just getting a bit of inspiration for a bit of work have a look at something that you would like to change in in here and do it yourself really try techniques i encourage you to try different techniques as you can see not all of mine are fantastic um you get the odd one here and there but i like them and i enjoy them honestly however let's go carry on <laughs> as you can uh, i'll as you well i definitely can i'm not sure if you do but i remember from last time where i discussed with you the layering effect where i would um layer pieces of paper and then um go over it over both sides um to carry on the uh, effect or drawing or such last time i on the other pages i used paint as you can see it's layered again and this time i decided to use several different techniques to um bring out these lovely koi fish uh this is uh from when we went to have actually go up into hollybush and we saw the koi there and i thought oh my goodness these are fantastic they are beautiful creatures and I really wanted to have a go at trying to uh, reproduce the um, the water effect on the top. So I uh, tried with the distortion techniques. So I tried to distort the image, which um, strengthened what I was trying to do with the two layering approach. But I did come across a few um, things that would disrupt that. As you can see this image distortion <laughs> so um i'd use a crayon uh, effect but i won't use singular colors i would interject like um some of the colors i would just throw in uh the reds because the the koi were not just a singular color some of them were like uh if you watch it through the water you could see with the orange there was like tints of red and yellows and such and then it would interject it would actually be look like it was being injected the actual body with water which had this lovely greenish blue kind of effect um look 
completely forgot about those one bit now. <laughs> but that's another thing that you could try. Um, again, I used techniques from this page to carry on the images with fins and such. And hidden in the in the bottom here, I don't know if you can see that, is one of my favourite cakes. <laughs> if you know what, what cake that is, uh, leave it in the message below in in uh, down below and i, I will uh, let you know if you got it right <laughs> ah here we go um again i kind of really clung on to this image distortion and i was i began to kind of obsess over it really so i'd use previous um techniques I brought back the uh, masking tape, as you can see. If you remember in the first, um, in the first one, we talked about masking techniques, and this time I'm using it as a, um, oh, as a base layer before I actually use my main um, crayon, like my main material over the top. And again, I used the layering effect and pulled it over the top of the masking tape now with masking tape you can either win or lose with it to be honest it depends on what where what type like um you're buying it from whether it's just like ones that haven't got a name on it or ones that have got a name on it They're, they've all got different layered effect they're just slight ever so slight texture on the top this one is actually a cheaper one that i i got from um down the shops and it worked with the crown a lot better than a named one would because the named one was quite smooth and it, it wouldn't it wouldn't you know the, the crown wouldn't adhere to the surface but you I mean this it's all trial and error that's what the sketchbook is for isn't it and again I used uh, the different techniques and it's not I found it quite it was relaxing very relaxing now you can see that the image has actually been pulled outwards and there was like a, like this injection like this invasion of water into the actual look into the body and it, it kind of off gave you these fascinating colours absolutely fascinating colours and I picked up on this there were like subtle like navy colours and greens and there was even a purple I don't know how but there was a purple in there and over from these ones I actually brought it over here so I used the colours from here and started to go over here now this time I you started using ink and I I was trying to work towards that flat surface that I can then like a flat layered textured surface that I can again layer upon with my other work I found it worked to a certain extent um, but using ink um, I found ink to be more expressive and used with a plain or minimal coloration scheme seem to um, benefit benefit that you could concentrate more on the exaggeration of uh, certain lines you could really get a sense of emotion through the work as you can probably see here that's why i chose to do that one plain but it had a wonderful texture at the bottom as well i actually dappled instead i worked into the i worked with the ink first and then slowly dappled with um white acrylic over the top and it faded some of the line work but gave me beautiful texture but you can still see the expression in it and i don't know why but i did pen over the top of there i don't agree with that now but <laughs> i think i was in a little bit of uh, 
high emotional state. Wait there, mate. Good, 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 good. We'll go through one more and then so as not to bore you too much. <laughs> no, this one's interesting too. Um for me, obviously. Uh, again, I started using some of those techniques again, but I've instead of them taking precedence over the rest of the work, I gave them more of a subtle influence. So this one's actually a mixture of several di different techniques. We have pencil, we have colour pencil and we have ink. And we actually have in the background, I actually used um, white acrylic again. See, bringing that back. And I found that this is, again, mixing with the ink, um, it's more expressive. So I went with the, the um, dry paintbrush to create these effects and pushed it down so as it would spread the ink across the page. Mine, I did not intend to do the images uh, that were that ended up there they just came out really so i started seeing images after i'd worked into it with the ink and a lot of them were, were saying moths hello cat cat's nudging me um so i used the uh, I used a pencil to bring these moths to light that, so that other people can see them too. And instead of going over the ink and fading an ink, I thought I decided to keep it because I wanted that strength again in that work. And afterwards, I wanted to see the colour. I wanted to see a bit of colour in there. So I, I randomly chose different colours for different actions. As you can see, it still remains quite expressive in a lot of the work, which is probably why I saw moths. Apart from particular shapes in there, um, they're quite animated. There's a lot of motion in there, so that's why I decided to keep And on to our last page. Yes, our last page for today. And I will let you go because we're working up to nearly half an hour. If you've stayed this long, oh my goodness. With my shaky voice and trying to get back into the swing of this. Thank you for staying. <laughs> so this one is, I went a little bit further with this one and decided to use a bit more of a dry brush technique and brush into um, the ink brushing to leave the texture behind uh, again you see i've pushed the masking tape to the background again just just to frame the, a little bit outside of the work not to really bring it out and i went back in with um crayon and i worked in with negative images again so it's like an, a, a huge amalgamation of several things several techniques that i've already used but the inside feels like uh it's expressive, but it feels like a regurgitation, a, a, a reminder of the techniques that I've already used. And again, we are, we've still got a little bit of layering here, a bit of pen and everything in there, which um, it took me a while to do. But then I was seeing images in that ink again. It was like, um, oh, kind of like how you see things in clouds or if someone's reading like uh, tea leaves or such you're seeing things that your imagination just pulls you along with and solidifies um but that is basically it really um i would encourage you to go back with work that you're not satisfied with and don't be afraid to um disrupt it to break it down to basically bring it back down to its foundations and bring it back up again with a different technique i guarantee you one day you will be 
at least okay with what you put on paper because any artist out there that says they're satisfied with the work is has either reached that point of breakdown or <laughs> just decided to accept it or that that, that 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 sense of achievement uh hasn't been fulfilled so i thought they'd leave it at that if you know what i'm talking about anyway so last thing before i go we are reaching 30 minutes <laughs> i will le let you have a little sneak peek of one of my pages and then i will leave it at that only a little bit though okay <laughs> we'll just keep it between us yeah so uh thanks for joining me i'm um, sorry it went on for so long i think i did a couple more pages than i intended to do but i think it's brought me back into the swing of things so if you have joined me um i have watched it so far even with all my stuttering i really appreciate it if there's anything you want to know about the techniques um anything you want to try um any particular like sketchbook you want to uh, use and you want some advice on whether it would work or not please get in touch um leave me a message down below or alternatively if, if you're not really a hundred percent with what i'm doing at the moment please let me know anyway i will accept that don't worry because i'll try something else <laughs> so again thank you very much for joining me and i appreciate the time that you've uh, taken to uh, taken with me i hope uh, you have a great day afternoon whatever and uh, enjoy it yeah go out there seize the day get those things that make you happy do the things that make you happy and i believe in you okay i really do so uh until next time bye